I mean, I've got your jersey as well, Sean. Um, so that is amazing. Saying, so you actually decided to keep it. Thank you very much. It's, uh, yeah, I yeah, kept it. Yeah, hopefully, yeah, hopefully, right. kind, hopefully kind of <laughs> <laughs> oh god well to celebrate the, uh, the famous grouse's spirit of rugby can you tell us the player who encapsulated the spirit of rugby the most throughout your career and why christina that's an extremely difficult question um there's been so many and i, and I suppose from my point of view i have to go for a south african um you know because you only you only get to, you see so many players uh, that you play against and, and you experience what they are like as a, as a rugby player. Um, and, and I've played against amazing players over the years, but it's not a, it doesn't have happen often that you get to experience the person behind, um, you know, behind the rugby player. And, and luckily, you know, in, in Jamie's case, we've been able to, to socially uh, engage a little bit and get to know each other off the field, but it doesn't happen that much. And, and that's why I say, you know, I need to go from a South African point of view because you need to, you need, you need to look at someone like that holistically, and and someone that really, um, that really captured that for me was John Smith, and a World Cup winning captain, um, you know, a great player in his own right. But you know, having having been through his journey with him, um, or such a long period of his journey with him, the way that he dealt with with everything around it all the extra stuff, the criticism, the sponsors, the, everything that goes with being a Springbok and being a captain, you know, he's just a, he's a phenomenal guy and, um, you know, really special individual, fantastic rugby player and he was a great captain. Um, I will add one as well because, you know, the spirit of rugby is, a, it's beautiful. You know, I think that's why I love the game. That's why, uh, yeah, you know, it, it has taught me so much and given me so much. Uh, and when I played my 100 test match in, in Wellington, New Zealand, um, I played against my Noni. And uh, just before halftime, um, he, he tackled me and, 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 he, and he basically broke his arm. And at halftime, they obviously looked at it and, and um, <clears throat> uh, took him to the hospital. Um, so we finished the game. We actually lost the game 14-10 uh, in Wellington. But when I got back to the change room in my locker, my actually took time to take his jersey, you know, put it on my seat as a as a sign of kind of respect for me playing my hundred test match, um, and I think stuff like that tells you much more than the unbelievable rugby player that my nonu was. Uh, so as a very close second, I'll go for a my nonu. That's amazing. That's an amazing story. It's just yeah, it's the touch of class, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, especially you know, and 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 I, that's the bond that that we as rugby players have. Um, you know, and I, and I always use the example, you, you try and rip each other's head off whilst playing for those 80 minutes. And then literally, you know, the random oak that's the referee blows the whistle and then everybody stops, shakes hands and it's like, hey, let's go have a beer. <laughs> you know? That's crazy, isn't it? When you, think, yeah. <laughs> when you think about it objectively, what a berserk <laughs> sport we play. <laughs> and, and so many Nuts. times you see, you see like a ball at the end of the game and guys are like, you know, and then the, and the whistle, and they go, I can I know how everything forgotten. Uh, yeah. It's beautiful. You've played in some huge games over the years, but do any come close to the 2013 Tri Nations decider against New Zealand? Because now Nigel Owens even said that it was the best atmosphere he's ever witnessed. So, what are your recollections from that incredible encounter? Yeah, look, it's not often that you, that you have in your top three games or top five games that you ever played in, um, you know, include including a loss. But that 2013 is definitely one of them. I just think that the quality of the game and everything that was at stake for that game and, and just the, the performance of both sides. And, and yes, we lost it, but it was, it was immense. The atmosphere was great. You know, I can remember the lead up to the game and you know, I was captain at that stage. The press conference on the Friday, the captain's press conference, you know, we had we had teams from the UK flying in, uh, you know, to to do the game, uh, and and um, um, you know, news news teams from from the UK, and the you know the coverage was was huge, and the, the interest was huge, you know, so, and and I think on the day we were able to deliver, both teams were able to deliver, so it was it was crazy, it was a amazing game. Unfortunately, we lost it. You know, we we had to score four tries against the All Blacks uh, and win the game. We got the four tries, but unfortunately they outscored us on the day. 
And there's there was a big question around that game in relation to why you didn't react to New Zealand substituting on an unregistered player in Dan Coles. So why did you not react negatively to that move? Because if you chase that up, surely um, there was a chance you would have won the championship because the points would have been de- deducted. Yeah, look, it's it's again one of those things. Um, you know, it's it was a it was an honest mistake um, by their manager, whom I've I've got to know quite well over the years as well. And um, you know, and he, he even came onto the field and said, "Look, I, I made an honest mistake, yeah." Um, <laughs> And, uh, you know, can we just move on? And, and I said, look, I, I think I made a comment. Uh, I think I made a comment actually to Nigel there and said, no, let's just, let's just play on and give us some points on the log. Um, jokingly, not knowing that that might actually have been the case um, if, we, if we stopped the game. But uh, again, it's the spirit of the game, being able to, to come in and uh, assess what's going on and, and decide what's best for for rugby, not necessarily just for us, but for the game of rugby. And um, and I thought it was the right decision then. So um, we all make mistakes, and I, you know, I'm I'm a little bit naive sometimes, but I would like to to think that, <clears throat> excuse me, it was an honest mistake from their part, and and we could just go on and play the game. Fair play to you. Fair play to you. I know what it's like to make a mistake. I made a mistake last week on the show, and the boys would not let me live it down and it was a very small mistake so um it is tough having to admit that you're human every now and then yeah it happens it i happens. was bitter about it jeez I'm not bitter about it at <laughs> not, all <laughs> let it go jeez <laughs> um, john you're possibly christina christina would you like to talk about it <laughs> yeah. do you know I'll, I'll i'll call you back later oh. and we'll have a chat through it because uh yeah you might be able to give me some wise words about how to get through it um yes. no but look you're possibly now the most unlucky player in in World Cup history, having missed out on four campaigns due to injury. So I think that up to 2015, you'd been to two World Cups, but it only lasted two nights on the tour. Um, so of all the campaigns that you did miss, which one kind of goes down as the one that you're most regretful for missing? Yeah, look, um, uh, 20, 2007, um, you know, again, so, so got selected for 03, Last warm-up game, got injured, didn't even make it onto the onto the plane. Um, 07, played the first game, five minutes into into the first game, um, I, I ruptured my bicep and and, and it was tour over. Um, uh, 2011, first game against Wells, actually tackling Jamie, popped two ribs, tackling him because he's just such a beast of a player, right? Elbows uh, and knees, mate. Elbows <laughs> and knees. Um, <laughs> and luckily, I. Was, <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I stayed on uh, uh, on the tour and, and played in the quarterfinal, but but you know it didn't didn't end that that well, obviously. And then um, break my jaw in the second game in in 2015, and yeah, international career over. So a lot to reflect back on. But the fact that we won the World Cup in 07, and and it was amazing being there for the for the final. Um, I celebrated as if I scored the, the winning try of, of the World Cup final. Um, but the, the fact that we won it, and you know, I was such a, I suppose I was a big part of the lead up to, to the World Cup, and, and then missing out, you know, it, it just feel it, it it's a it's a bittersweet sweet one. 